Hi scholars, today I'm going to be showing you how to make the data tables and graphs for your lab. Um, so here you see this is the same data table template that you guys um, will have received for this experiment. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix this up and get it all ready for your data collection and then analysis. First thing we're going to do. So I'm requiring three trials, so we might as well start by adding in that trial two, trial three, check your spelling because I cannot tell you how many times I have seen trail one, trail two, trail three. This is not a hike, this is a lab experiment. Next thing we're going to do is, I don't want to see any sample one, sample two, sample three. Like actually name your samples. I just put it in there as filler because you guys all have different samples. So I'm going to use the samples we did in the lab um, at the very beginning. So we did methanol, we did hexane, we did acetone, and we did water. Okay. So what we're going to do down here is, and you're going to fill in your own samples for those names. Then at the end, we're going to need to do some statistical calculations. So if we have more than one sample, we're always going to want an average right? And then another statistical thing we're probably going to want is the range. The range can help us look at precision, right? So how close the data points are for t from each other. And then the last thing, there's a couple things. There's a lot go that's going to be going on in this experiment. Um, if you are doing melting point or boiling point, you will also be able to do a percent error. So for that, we're going to do a theoretical, and I'll explain what that is in a bit. So we're going to start. Let's fill this up. Oh, and then using the theoretical, that's going to help you find percent error. Now, you're not going to have these unless you're doing melting point or boiling point. That's not how you spell error. So those are only if you're doing melting point or boiling point. Now these boxes, I'm going to leave all these blank for now because we'll fill those in when we get into the lab. But for these ones, average. Some of you did this in the last lab report, some of you didn't. So we're going to use the equal sign to tell Sheets that we want it to do math for us because Sheets is just our little technology slave. I'm going to type the word average and it pops up down there so I can just tap on it. And then I'm going to select the boxes that I want to average. So for this would be my three trials of methanol. And then the little green check mark. Okay, It's going to do that because there's nothing to calculate the average of. That's totally fine. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to then highlight all of those boxes. If you tap on them and you do autofill, what that does is it copies that formula over for each of the four samples that you're testing. So that's our average. Next one we're going to set up is the range. This helps us with precision. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do an equal sign. And the range is the highest value minus the lowest value. You could do this um, by just calculating it. Or we can go max. And then, so that's going to be one of our formulas. Select my three trials. Okay. And then I'm going to subtract. The minimum, so same thing, just type the word minimum and it will do that. Okay. And that's going to be your range. So the biggest number of your trials minus the smallest number. Same thing, we'll highlight those. Autofill. Now the autofill only shows up if you've hidden the keyboard. So make sure to check that um, green checkbox next to the keyboard so it goes away. Next, we're going to do a theoretical. Okay, so if you're doing boiling point or melting point, you'll actually be able to Google the um, temperatures that they are supposed to boil at. So let's say I'm going to go into Safari. Safari. There we go. <laughs> That's a tutorial sign in. Um, Safari. Okay, I'm going to hide the book. So don't go away. Okay, whatever. Oh, there's the button. I found it. Um, boiling point. Oh, my iPad is so slow. Um, methanol. 
Okay. So we're gonna find the boiling point of methanol. 140. Oh, no, we don't want Fahrenheit. Make sure you're getting Celsius. So 64.7 degrees Celsius. So I'll just go back. Oh dear. There we go. 64.7. Now remember, if we put numbers in something, we don't ever want to put words. Um, so that's exciting. And then... We could do the same thing for hexane, oops, um, hexane, acetone, all that stuff. Okay, um, I'm just going to do it for one because I don't want to have to go and Google all of those. And then for the percent error, here's how you do percent error. Equal sign. Your actual, so that your actual is your average. Nope, minus your theoretical, which is that number that we googled. Now we have to put this in parentheses because what's going to happen if we don't put it in parentheses is that it's going to divide the wrong thing so make sure those things are in parentheses. So that actual, so your average minus your theoretical divided by the theoretical again, okay? And then we're going to multiply this whole thing by 100 because it's a percentage and then Obviously, that's still going to be nothing, um, which is fine. Then I'm going to do the same thing, autofill. Now my data table is set up and ready to go. There are a couple things you can do to make this pretty. Um, standard convention, if you want to make it pretty, is to put a line underneath the headers. So in this case, you would highlight your headers, select this box right there, the borders, and do the one on the bottom. I would also do the same thing to separate my trials, my like actual lab data from the calculations. That's a lot of calculations. Okay, so we're gonna separate those two things with those nice lines, and that's it. Now, let's say I go into lab, I collect my data for methanol, and let's say I get one boiling point of 60, one of my boiling points is, uh, I don't know, let's call it 60. N 8 and 62. Let's say those are the temperatures that I record in the lab. I'm going to throw some decimal paste on there too because our temperature probes do have decimal points. So 62.9, 68.1, and 60.5. Okay, that's good. Awesome. Now you see all of my math filled in. A couple things we have to do. One, the de number of decimal places here should always match the number of decimal places that you measured. So I only measured to one decimal places. I need to go into my A with the little lines next to it, go to cell, and all the way at the bottom, you can change the decimal places. We're going to set this to one because I only measured to one decimal place, so I should only record to one decimal place. Okay. One of the things I'm realizing that I have here, or that I'm missing, is... I never described what this is, so there's a couple things you could do. You could just in your headers write methanol boiling point instead, or if you want, you can just, we can merge all of these cells, so we only have to write it once, and then we can type boiling point, and then I want to put my, um, unit, which would be degrees. Oh no, those are emojis. Oh god, where's my keyboard? Here we go. Degrees Celsius. Okay. And voila, you have a beautiful data table. Next part, I'm going to talk about then how do we turn this into graphs. So with your graphs, I only want you to be graphing your average data. Um, that's really hard to do with the way that this table is set up. I want this whole table in your lab report. But I also want like just a nice clean graph. So here's what I want in your graph. Um, I want your average, right, or your sample, right? So that would be methanol, hexane, um, acetone, whoops, 
and water. Okay, I want the average boiling point in degrees Celsius, so degree symbol in Celsius. I want, oh, I don't like that. You can resize that. Um, average boiling point in degrees Celsius. We want, I also want for your graphs, if you have it, if you're doing boiling point or melting point, theoretical, because I want to visually see how close or how far you were from your, um, the actual value point. Now we can't always do this. We don't always have an actual value for some of these measurements, things that haven't been studied before and like, like that. Um, but for, in this case we do. So theoretical boiling point in degrees Celsius. I'm going to resize that column again because we don't like our columns to get cut off. Um, actually, another way to do that instead of resizing, I know that this is kind of just an aside. If your columns are cut off, there we go. let's say if your columns are cut off like that, you can actually wrap text. So that's this fun little button up there that has the little like arrow that's wrap text. That's a nice one. Okay, so your average boiling point. Let's so for my methanol, for example, I'm going to have sixty three point eight. Again, don't put any letters. That'll make it so it won't graph. And then our theoretical is sixty four point seven. Sixty four point seven. Okay. You would obviously do that for all of your samples, but we're not gonna do that right now. Now what I wanna do? I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna highlight this small mini chart. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the plus button and chart. And so it's going to give you some options. It's like line chart. That's not what we want. Um, we want a bar or column chart. Column charts are nice. And then you, what you can see here is it's now given you a chart of the methanol, your actual average that, you cap, uh, that you've measured in the lab in blue, and the theoretical, which is the actual boiling point um, based on previous scientific studies in red. So this gives us a really nice visual of how close yours is to the theoretical. So this will give you something to talk about in your possible errors paragraph. And also when you have your other data points, hexane, acetone, water in this case, you can clearly see which one has the highest boiling point. So that is the advantage to this graph. You got that. I'm going to do a little checkbox. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to add some stuff to this. So we need to edit chart. Um, it's a column chart, the legend's to the right. You can change where the legend is, right is fine for us. We need to do titles. So the horizontal axis title, that's the x-axis. Nope, not no marks, oh dear, um, is boiling point. Or no, 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 sample, right? That's the horizontal axis. Um, so liquid, tested. And then the vertical axis title, that's going to be our boiling point. And just like we did before, we're going to put that in. Always put your units if you have a number measurement. Degrees Celsius. Update title. Um, I don't care if you actually put a chart title. I know some people are really picky about that. I personally am not because what I want to see is a caption that captures your chart title in your lab report. So there you go. There's your chart. Cool thing about this is now you should be able to... Um, screenshot this. Sometimes you can copy paste. I don't know. It's a little nitpicky. But you can screenshot this and then put that in your lab report. Um, and there you have it. That's how you make a really nice data tables and charts for your lab.